it's Mark. Welcome to Scotch Sunday. And today I'm going to respond to the very first request that I ever had to do a review. It was back in July of, of last year when I did the uh, Glenmore and Jean Mil Milshan. Uh, it was Asian lettering, so I'm not sure how to say the name or anything like that. But anyway, this was as a request. I'm going to do the Glen Levitt 21. Yes, it took me quite a while to find a bottle. Um, matter of fact, when I got this bottle the other day, the uh, owner even said to me, it's like they can't even get any Glen Levitt right now. He said nothing, not even a core line. It's just really, really, stuff's really hard to find. This was the only one they had on the shelf. Um, so this is, I'm going to go ahead and open this up and pour this. This comes in a pretty fancy box. And this is a space item. It's 43% ABV. And so it's probably chill filtered and colored. Uh, however, there is some sherry cask in there, so I still think there's, but it is 21 years old, so maybe it's not, maybe there isn't much coloring in there, so, okay, so Glen Levitt is the space side. They were founded in 1824, I believe, um, yep, 1824. And they were the first distillery to apply for a license to legally distill in Scotland. And this kind of caused other distillers to be a little angry with, with, um, with Glen Levitt, with um, George Smith, who founded Glen Levitt. And he ended up having to carry around a couple of flint block pistols given him by a duke. I think it was like some kind of duke or baron or something, some kind of lower realm loyalty. Um, and just to carry around with his... Uh, protection. Now they didn't like him applying for the distill to distill legally because they felt like that was going to just kind of cut into their business and cause prices to drop and and such. So um, he was threatened on multiple occasions, and uh, they had to. And I think that's yeah. They just uh, they were afraid profits were going to go down, so that's kind of why they were well, they were out to get them for a while. Now, Levitt, Glen means of course valley, and Levitt is the river that runs through that valley. Um, other distilleries have attached kind of Glen Levitt to their name based on just the location. They've been, but the, however, they have been operating nonstop since 1824, with their only closure being during World War II. Um, Let's see, I think there is, like, I think maybe it's Glenmore, Glenmoray. If you see Glen Levitt, Glenmoray, or Glenmoray, Glen Levitt, because they're in the same vicinity. And But the, Glen Levitt ultimately did a bunch of lawsuits to try and keep their name intact. So some of them, however, did end up with permission to carry, the, to hyphenate the name. They are the largest single malt distiller in the U.S. and their second largest worldwide. In, I think in the 1950s, they accounted for half of all the scotch sold in the U.S. Uh, some of their scotch does end up in blends, including Chivas Regal, and who actually handles bottle, the bottling part portion for Glen Levitt. Uh, but approximately 6 million bottles are sold as, as single malts. And they, I think in 2008, they, started, they did a distillery expansion, um, which is why there was some additions to their core range. But I think, of course, the pandemic and just supply chain stuff is kind of like, like I said, it's evaporating off the shelves. Uh, or actually, it's not evaporating, it's just not even getting to the shelves. So they have 14 still, seven wash, and seven spirit. So this, again, 43%. Um, so I am going to go ahead and roll this. And then I will show it to you. In the glass and in the bottle, show you the bottle there. It's a pretty fancy box for a 21 year old. I don't think there's much on the box far. It just says uh, Glen Levitt Archive. Single malt Scotch whiskey. This batch of special edition single malt Scotch whiskey has been selected by the Glen Levitt Master Distiller from the distillery archive of rare and exceptional casks. Where George Smith established the Glen Levitt distillery in 1824, his single malt whiskey reflected his conviction that only the best would do and was a, a claim for the highest assurance of quality. 
this heavy duty wood. I gotta figure out what to do with that. Hmm. Not sure what I can. I don't think there's much else on here. That's exactly what was on the button. Everything exactly the same. I do get a, a batch number 0121T. Just the Glen Livet 21 year old is bottled in small batches from casks hand selected from at, at the peak of their maturity from the distillery archive. That's it. So, all right, I'm gonna give this one more roll. Very Glen Levity in that it's orchard fruit. Apples, a lot of apples. Pears. I get some grapes. Dried fruit, dried raisins. I get pineapple. Okay. Get a little bit of vanilla and honey, not much, but really green apples are what I get here. There is a sherry note, but it's not, it's just pretty, this is very well balanced. I get a sherry note, I get a fruit note. Um, you know, and I won't say very well balanced, it's balanced between those two. I don't get so much caramel, toffee, vanilla, as much as I get fruit and um, kind of a sherry. Some pineapple, definitely apples, pears, grapes, raisins, citrus. I'm getting a little bit of toasted coconut. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this pineapple and toasted coconut, so it's definitely got a tropical fruit. So it's very fruit and sherry balanced. There is, again, vanilla and honey, but it's not super, super there. 43%, I'm not getting a lot of pepper or cinnamon or ginger or anything like that. Really just a fruit bomb. Fruit. A fruit bomb with some sherry. What does it remind me of? There is a definite grassy note coming through. Yeah, when I take a long nose, yeah. Getting some grassy note. Kind of reminds me of... Again, that, like a... Apple coconut, apple toasted coconut kind of thing. Ooh, okay. There is some spice now. Definitely getting some cinnamon. Um, nutty. So I'm guessing it's Oloroso casks. Very nutty. Walnuts, hazelnuts. I'm getting some butter um, with dried fruit, dates, raisins. Some vanilla comes through. The finish is dry and nutty. Yeah, okay. It's good. Now, is it $300 good? I don't know. I actually don't remember what I paid, but it was north of three. I think I'm, I'm thinking I paid $350. And this was a couple years ago, this was probably $250. I'm getting those that that those nuts now. So 
yeah, some toasted nuts and coconut. Mm-hmm. Still fruit bun. Still apples, pears, raisins, citrus. Some dates, pineapple. Yeah. can't tell if my camera froze, so I'll go back over here. With, looks like it may have froze on there. Okay, I'm getting a lot of cinnamon now. Spicy cinnamon. Like, yeah, like spicy, yeah, spicy cinnamon. I can't think of what, it's definitely a, Spicy note now, nutty, some caramel, a little bit of vanilla there, but some chocolate malt, um, raisins, dates, dried fruits. Okay, so is this a good whiskey? Yes. Is it good to try? Absolutely. It's 43% ABV, so I'm not a big fan of 43% anything. I'm not even a fan of 46%. Everything should be 48 or north of 50. North of 50, north of 48 at the, at the least. So, and the price on this is very expensive for what you get. Um, I don't know that I would... I will not buy another bottle, but it would be cool to have another bottle. So I guess with that, um, so it belongs on your shelf in one sense, but not on the other. If this was a, this is a $150 bottle, not a $350 bottle. Um, so I guess that's the thing, price point for you. Everybody's price point is different. You know, it, this may, the price on this may, be absolutely astronomical for because you, there's so many better whiskeys out there that are significantly less than this. Um, and it's Glen Levitt. There's never really been a Glen Levitt that's just blown me away. Uh, it's pretty much an, to me an entry level scotch. Uh, I think their core line is good for what it is. It's a great core line. You know, that's kind of where I, I stand with Glen Levitt. So, all right, so people have asked about my scale. I use a 10 point Likert scale. And it is pronounced liquor, and so the reason I use 10 is, and I've learned this because I've done research, and you know, we look at reliability and validity in particular, but then you also look at things like power analysis and sample size and you know, all those other things out there. But anyway, so when we talk about reliability, um, means is the measurement you use consistent over time, and with liquor scales. The larger you make the scale, the less reliable it's going to be. So I make it 10. Uh, five would, I think, would be would leave too little nuance. But if a, a hundred, anyone, I think using a hundred point liquor scale is ridiculous. You, you, you're, it's not reliable. And I've seen and I've watched people. And they're like 86, 86, 86, 80. Everything's 86. So if you use 86, then you know you're not you're not distinguishing any nuance. Uh, and what's the difference between an 85 and an 86? So I use a 10 point liquid scale, enough of that soapbox, I'll get off of that. So, okay, um, that's, this is a tough one. Because it's so expensive, I would not recommend it. Um, but it is it is a good whiskey, absolutely. I will drink it and I won't buy another one just because of the price. If the price was less, I would absolutely buy another one. So kind of like, so I guess I kind of have to go with seven because I don't like to say the price, I don't like to use price point as to whether it belong, whether I would drink it or not, because I would drink this. If I had another bottle, I would drink it, but I'm not going to just because of the price. So there you have it. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for the request. And we'll see you next time.